Thanks for watching CBS 8 Plus and welcome to this throwback special. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. With more than 70 years of broadcasting, we've been able to share so many memorable moments that matter to our San Diego community and beyond. One of our most popular features over the years was the unknown eater. It was a unique concept. Critics would have the red carpet rolled out for them so it was easy for restaurants to put their best foot forward. The unknown eater was an answer to that, with restaurants not knowing who or when a reviewer would be coming in. CBS 8 News Director Jim Holtzman came up with the plan. You'll hear him as well as the man with the longest run as the unknown eater. For those of you who may have forgotten, this is how the unknown eater brings you the most honest and helpful restaurant reviewer around. Since no one knows who I am or what my name is, I can eat a meal in a restaurant just the same way you do, with no special service or special attention from the kitchen. There are no cameras when I do my review. News 8 sends the cameras back later for the pictures after I've already eaten my meal and formed my opinion. So you'll get the truth, good or bad, about your favorite restaurants and about some new places you might be thinking about trying. And I'll be eating at all sorts of restaurants, the expensive, the not so expensive, and those spots where you can get a real bargain meal. And I'll be checking out breakfast places, and lunch places, and brunch places, and of course dinner places. And I'm open to suggestions. If you have any ideas of restaurants the unknown eaters should try, write me in care of News 8 at Box 80888, San Diego. The zip is 92138. Truth in Restaurant Reviewing returns to San Diego Television. As long as the unknown eater remains unknown, you'll know where and how to spend your hard-earned meal money. Till next week, this is the unknown eater for News 8. Back in 1986, there was a new reporter on News 8, a restaurant critic who shared his opinion on Great Eats, but who never showed his face. And I am that former food critic. I'm the unknown eater, but you can call me Jim Blankenship. For 15 years, I ate at over a thousand local restaurants from cheap to gourmet cuisine, always opinionated and always unknown. The unknown idea came from legendary News 8 News Director Jim Holtzman. He decided that I'd never show my face so that I could dine at any restaurant without a camera crew and without warning, so that I could get the same food and service any other customer would get. Later the story would be shot and edited, but the opinions always came from my unknown visit. Probably my favorite review was at Fio's, Italian in the gas lamp quarter. After eating there, the owners refused to let us film inside their restaurant. So I got the food to go, placed it on a newsstand across the street, and had News 8 anchor Lorraine Kimmel try out the food, and she loved it as much as I did. It's delicious. It's all, it is all great. And I got to experience cuisine from the finest chefs in town, from Deborah Scott at the Indigo Grill, to Joe Busalaki at his incredible seafood pasta dish, to the amazing flavor of the food at Thai House Cuisine, all so good, they ended up being the best restaurant of the year. But to be honest with you, my favorite restaurants were not the expensive, gourmet, elaborate meals. I just love a good hole in the wall. It's my hole in the wall. It's my spirited hole in the wall. Leah's Filipino food was amazing. <laughs> it's not a hole in the wall. It's really good Filipino food. I love it. All this work? I love it. And C.C. Chang, owner of the Dragon Walk, made Kung Pao chicken that was the best in the known universe. The food is fabulous. The unknown eater went international with this review of the street food in Bangkok, Thailand. I tried the meals served on a hundred-year-old boat on the Amazon River. And I sampled the cuisine of the Caribbean served on a sailboat. And finally, I tried halibut fish and chips in Sitka, Alaska. Nice and fluffy all the way through. And crisp. And crisp, you bet. It was a fascinating, calorie-filled dining extravaganza that lasted 15 years and always ended up with the same sign-off. For News 8, I'm the Unknown Eater. Boy, tough gig, right? Well, restaurants come and go, but some manage to stand the test of time. Generations of San Diegans have enjoyed these next eateries. Why? We know part of it is how they make us feel. That's something that's kind of tough to explain. But one secret may just be that they all provide good old-fashioned home cooking. Back in May of 1944, a small lunch counter with a dozen or so stools was established at First and Juniper here in San Diego. It was called the Juniper Grill then. The place has undergone three name changes and there's been considerable expansion in the past 37 years. The idea of the Juniper Grill, now Hobnob Hill, has always remained pretty much the same. 
Good home cooking complemented by the friendliest service possible. Now, you can get an argument about whether it's best to go to Hobnob Hill for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, but the unknown eater is really partial to their breakfast. Nothing fancy here in the morning. The eater's poached eggs, sausage patties, and hash browns were about what you'd expect, only a touch better somehow. Maybe it is the service, or maybe the coffee, or maybe the cranberry coffee cake, which came with the meal. Whatever it was, breakfast, even if you pay $3.95, just seems to taste better and even feel better at Hobnob Hill. You may have to wait a few minutes for a table, but breakfast is still such a pleasant, relaxing experience that it won't bother you a bit. And after you finish, you won't be hungry, but consider buying some of their baked goods for a bit later in the day. A banana nut bread or a cranberry cheese bread is a perfect little reminder of a perfect breakfast. When it comes to longtime favorite local restaurants, you're looking at the granddaddy of them all. Hobnob Hill has been run by the same family since 1944, serving some of the best breakfasts San Diego has to offer. I never eat this much, really. Is there something about the restaurant that inspires you? Yes, it does. And that something is a comfortable, friendly feeling you get eating here, helped along by the top-notch waitresses with some of the longest-running careers in town. Starting 17 years. Must I enjoy know. it. Oh, I do. Best service in town. Kids seem to enjoy Hobnob Hill. Most say it's fine. And priests like the place too. Father, would you like a little bit more coffee? Please. Businessmen and business deals are as common as bacon and eggs here, but the power meals aren't limited to the males. Well, actually, we are having somewhat of a business lunch. Even newly elected sheriffs can't seem to get enough of those great hobnob breakfasts. We're in good hands when the sheriff shows up. Harold Hurst is the man who brings this diverse bunch of people together. He's been the owner of the restaurant since it opened. It's a never-ending job. Harold gives the carefully crafted recipes credit for some of Hobnob's success, but mostly, he says... The difference between luck and skill, if you have the preference, I'd just as soon have a little luck. But luck can't take credit for this incredible corned beef hash, and luck doesn't make the Eggs Benedict a feast for the eyes as well as the stomach. And luck didn't bake the famous coffee cakes and muffins. No, there's a lot more to Hobnob Hill, but this computer isn't one of those things. It's a Sierra POS uh, fine dining restaurant system. High tech at the old Hobnob, why it's almost heresy. I like working with different things, so it worked out pretty good. The look on Shirley's face reveals a different story, with rumors of confused orders and nasty exchanges between waitresses and chefs. Well, it just didn't work for our particular system. And what, you ask, is that infernal machine used for now? As a cash register only. So there is justice in the universe, and there's no question there are amazing breakfasts at Hobnob Hill, a classic longtime favorite San Diego restaurant. Harry's Cafe is a La Jolla tradition. It's been in the same place for nearly 30 years, serving breakfast and a lot of repeat customers during that time. And it's homey and pleasant and just nice to see people on a regular basis coming into the same place. Well, I'm not from La Jolla, but I felt right at home the moment I walked into Harry's. This place is a vision right out of my childhood. There's a long counter with people sitting on spinning stools and waitresses. I mean, the experienced and form kind. Someone who tell you what's good and what's not. If the chef burned the rolls today, she'll be sure and let you know. And it's nice when you get to know people and they come in every day. Some people eat here more than once a day. So they know about me and my family and my children and they ask how everything is. Well, our waitress said to try the cinnamon rolls. Some of the best in town, she said. Thick, chewy, covered with icing and full of, you guessed it, cinnamon. And they were delicious. We sat at one of Harry's booths and noticed that for a cafe, there were sure a lot of paintings on the walls. Well, gives a little bit of variety, lets you, while you're having breakfast, look at the pictures, um, maybe buy a piece of art on your way out. Well, we were more inclined to sample Harry's breakfast and his artwork and started with the super omelet, stuffed with ham, onions, salsa, and cheese, as good as it was huge. Mrs. Eater was more conventional and ordered the strawberry pancakes, a nice change of pace over your standard flapjacks. Eater Jr. was along with us on this day and had the child's plate of French toast, again, nicely done and big enough for most adults. Our meal for three ran us $17. Now, a lot of people are fans of Harry's, but probably the most popular customer here is Ben. Ben's a regular here, sure. He's real good about sitting right down by the table. He's our official greeter in the mornings, on the nice mornings. He's here most every day. He likes his toast lightly buttered, though. Well, Ben is obviously someone of discriminating taste, and judging from his looks, the food at Harry's will even give you a glossy coat. The eater has a confession to make. I have a real fascination with those little hole-in-the-wall restaurants. You know, the kind that's small, stays open late, and usually serves only burgers and sandwiches. And I found a real good one in Hillcrest. 
The Crest Cafe is sort of hidden in a row of buildings between 4th and 5th Avenues. The burgers are good and thick and cooked just the way you order. They're made from extra lean, freshly ground beef, so they don't come out greasy. And they're served on either an onion roll or a poppy seed roll with a side order of homemade potato chips. They taste as delicious as they sound. The burgers start at $2.75 and go up to $5.95, but most are in the $3 to $4 range. The Crest Cafe also serves sandwiches, soups, salads, and breakfast. This is Rudford's in North Park, a neighborhood-style cafe, always open, always good, according to the sign. As you might expect, the place attracts a lot of regulars. I've been eating breakfast in here about once a week for 30 years. I eat here every other day. And everyone seems to know everyone else. Is there anyone that doesn't eat here? Well, I hadn't until recently, and if you're looking for a hot and friendly breakfast, you'll like Rudford's. It's like eating at home. You'll find all sorts here, all with different favorites from the menu. The ham and cheese omelets here are delicious. The French toast. Especially the waffles. I love it. And so did I. I ordered French toast. It was served with a bit too much butter, but was still good. So were the eggs and hash browns. Eat where the truckers eat. It's an old truism that's usually right on the mark. Well, Perry's is in the right place, the junction of Highway 8 and 5, and truck drivers are here. It's about the only place around where we can get our rigs off the road and get something to eat that's pretty good. Inside, Perry's has a Denny's feel to it, big windows, booths, and an eating counter. The breakfast menu is pretty impressive, 11 kinds of frittatas or fancy omelets, 10 different Mexican breakfasts, as well as a standard waffles and pancakes. And I've traveled all over the United States in a, a motor home and a travel trailer in Canada, down in Mexico, no place like Paris. On almost every busy corner in San Diego, you can find a place which calls itself a liquor store hyphen deli. What they are really are stores where you can buy cold beer and wine and maybe a submarine sandwich wrapped in plastic paper. That's not a deli. But this place is, D.Z. Aikens in the college area. True, D.Z. Aikens Deli may not slice all the meats and cheese you'd find in a New York deli, but the food they fix is certainly authentic enough. For dinner, all sorts of Jewish-style specialties. For lunch, an amazing selection of sandwiches that aren't cheap, but are big and delicious. And for breakfast, some items such as fried matzahs and scrambled salami and eggs and balinces you just can't get anywhere else. Whatever you order, you get lots of food, and it's the genuine article. The turkey sandwiches, for instance, are made with real turkey slices, not something chopped off a roll held together with gelatin. San Diego has never been known, really, for its delis. Some people who move here from New York have been known to bemoan that fact, almost to the point where you'd think they left a member of their family behind. Of course, the more people who come here from the East, the more likely it is that more places like D.Z. Aikens will spring up. And that's certainly good news, because their food is excellent. For decades, the chicken pie shop has been selling its famous chicken pies to San Diegans. The pies are nothing fancy, chunks of chicken and turkey and gravy cooked inside a light pie crust. But they are good, and you just can't beat the price. The chicken pie dinner, which includes mashed potatoes, vegetables, coleslaw, and dessert, costs $2.65. That's right, $2.65 for everything and the portions are not small. In fact, by the time you have to decide whether you want pie or ice cream for dessert, you're wondering if you even have room for any more food. Now, you don't have to eat here. The chicken pie shop will box your order to go if you call it in ahead of time. You can get either the full dinner or just the chicken pie, and it's a good way to avoid the crowds at the peak lunch and dinner hours. There's nothing fancy about the chicken pie shop. When you first walk in with all the sights and sounds, it's almost like you're entering a diner from the 1950s. You get the feeling some of the waitresses might have been there that long, too. But they're all friendly, and the food there is served in what seems like seconds. Now, I'm not going to tell you the chicken pie shop is great. The eater found the meal needed a lot of pepper to add some tang, and with all the starch in the meal, it's not for somebody who's on a diet. But the food is good, especially when you consider the price. Two people can get two full dinners for less than $7, and that's a terrific bargain any way you look at it. I know the eater will be going back. I just wish I could figure out how they kept the price so low. For News 8, this is the Unknown Eater. Chicken Pie Shop is marking 85 years in May of 2023. Uh, to mark that, they will celebrate by going through a remodel. As a coastal city, it's only natural that San Diego has an incredible array of seafood restaurants. A few have become household names over the years. All roads lead to Anthony's. Well, it seems that way at least. Besides the three restaurants at the Embarcadero, there's an Anthony's in La Jolla, one in La Mesa, and another in Chula Vista. 
I'm being a little better off than a tourist one night. I followed the signs and went to the Star of India. There to my wondering eyes, three restaurants, all called Anthony's, and all within 100 yards of the other on Harbor Drive. Well, that first night without our News 8 cameras, Anthony's Fish Grotto was closed. I walked next door to the elegant Star of the Sea Room and saw a sign reading, Tie Required. Well, the unknown eater doesn't even own a tie. So across the street, I went to Anthony's Harbor Side. Of the three Anthony's, it's the moderately priced one. I had the red snapper at Anthony's Harbor Side, and it was not the tourist ripoff I was expecting. A giant piece of fish, lightly breaded, with a wine sauce and mushroom topping. The old mouth waters just to think of it. Best of all, a seafood salad bar, with the works, plus crab legs and outstanding clam chowder. Now, lots of people go in for the salad bar alone, but either way, the prices are reasonable at Anthony's Harbor Side, considering what you get. Oh, and after peeking inside, the unknown eater may just have to get a tie and head across now to the Star of the Sea Room. If the eater had a chance to pick a spot for a seafood restaurant, this would be the place. It offers a terrific view and is very easy to get to. However, somebody already beat me to it. World Famous offers one of the best views of the ocean in San Diego. It's small, but every table gives you a chance to look out one of the big picture windows. World Famous sits right on the end of Thomas Avenue in Pacific Beach, and that does create a bit of a problem. Parking in the area is virtually non-existent, especially when there's a crowd at the beach, so you sometimes end up driving around for a while before finding a place to park. But believe me, it's worth it. World Famous offers a good selection of seafood, both at lunch and dinner. The eater was impressed the first time I ate there because World Famous doesn't put a lot of breading on their seafood, and that in turn doesn't kill the taste, which is delicious. The eater recommends the fish and chips for lunch, made up of two jumbo shrimp and a piece of halibut, and the scallops for dinner. Now for the bad news. As with most good seafood restaurants in San Diego, World Famous is a bit on the expensive side. Lunch, for instance, will probably cost you $16 for two. That's competitive with other restaurants in the area, only I think the food is better. Okay, okay, you're right. It's been a while since I've had a meal in North County. Too much traffic, too far to go. But I've been hearing a lot about a place in Solana Beach called the Fish Market. A huge crowd greeted us on a Friday night, and I wondered just what the big draw was. Good food, nice people, good atmosphere. Pretty wages. Pretty wages. Hey, what more can you ask for? We settled back with a huge crab cocktail, and 25 minutes later... Our name was called. The dining room is right next to the kitchen and the grill was going full blast. If this doesn't make you hungry, you'd better check your pulse. The place has a nice woodsy New England feel to it and just enough nautical knickknacks to remind you that this is a fish restaurant. But the first food to get our attention here was a sourdough bread. Hot, moist and wonderful. And for $2.50, the garlic version with melted feta cheese is so good it should be illegal. Next, we tried the New England style clam chowder and found it first rate. But the oyster Rockefeller appetizer was only fair. A strong, cheesy flavor was about all I could taste. And then the entree, grilled fresh fish. The fish market makes a big deal about the fresh part. I think it's really important to find the best you can find for people. I mean, would you eat second-class food? I wouldn't. Well, obviously, this guy hasn't eaten at some of the restaurants I have, but there's nothing second-class here. My orange roughy was tender, moist, with an excellent flavor, and Mrs. Eater's Eastern scallops are about the best I've ever tasted. Our waitress had a sense of humor, knew all about the food in the menu, and considering the crowd, gave us good service. The bill for two people, including appetizer, soup, salad entree, a bottle of wine, and tip, reached a grand total of $59. The fish market, excellent fish, incredible bread, and worth the drive. You'll find Point Loma seafood between the sports fishing boat dock and Shelter Island. It's a great place to buy fresh seafood. There's one of the largest live lobster tanks in the city here. But this mob scene is not here for the lobsters, it's for the cooked seafood. Everything from crab cakes to fried squid sandwiches, which are served in what is undoubtedly one of the busiest restaurants in town. 93. I know it looks crowded, but the wait here is never very long, mainly because the food is prepared at a pace usually reserved for fast food burger joints. We serve probably six to 700 sandwiches a day, so that's a lot of food going on. But can fast seafood be good seafood? Well, the people I talk to all seem pretty happy with their meals. Very good. The shrimp is real good. Crab, crab cakes, fish, ceviche. Very good. 
Sloppy squid. Great. The dining room at Point Loma Seafood has one of the nicest water views in town. Now, I tried the $4 crab sandwich, full of snow crab with a delicious mild tartar sauce, and it was very good. But even better was a $3.25 squid sandwich, a generous portion of fried squid on sourdough bread, and it was outstanding. We also tried the $4.35 seafood combo, fried shrimp cod, and a crab cake that really made the selection special. My only disappointment here was the red chowder. I still think Anthony's has the best. But considering the rest of the meal, I rate Point Loma Seafood as one of the best seafood eateries in town, as well as probably the best bargain. For News 8, I'm the Unknown Eater. Classics. Anthony's on the Harbor closed in 2017, replaced by Portside Pier, a cluster of four restaurants owned by the Brigantine Group. You can still visit Anthony's Fish Grotto in La Mesa, though. Sharing a border with Mexico and Tijuana, there is no way that San Diego was not going to have some of the best Mexican food in America. And while Mexican cuisine in San Diego grows more and more diverse every day now, we're going old school here, of course, with some longtime San Diego favorites. Tucked about halfway in between Del Mar and Solana Beach, there is a small area called Eden Gardens. And while the beach cities have squeezed in on Eden Gardens from all sides, the neighborhood certainly has maintained its own identity and flavor. The fact that some of the area's best Mexican food can be found along one block of Valley Avenue is testimony to that. Tony's Hakal fits in nicely on Valley Avenue. The food is authentic, the atmosphere is Eden Gardens, and the prices allow you to take the entire family out. The menu at Tony's Hakal is pretty much what you'd expect at a Mexican restaurant. They have the usual complement of tacos, tostadas, and burritos. But that menu is set up in a way which allows you to mix and match to your own taste. If you want two of these and one of those, you can get it just that way. If you want to split a couple of things among a couple of kids, you can do it. And that can save you money most times. You start your meal with corn chips sprinkled with cheese, but be a little careful at first of the hot sauce. It's a genuine article. The unknown eater enjoys hot sauce, and I knew I was enjoying the hot sauce at Tony's Akal when my eyebrows started to sweat. I had the machaca. It was excellent. They made it without tomatoes for me, just the way I like it. Again, having a choice makes a difference. I sampled the family's burritos and taquitos and chili rellenos, all good. And the service is quick and friendly, but one warning here. They don't bring you a check. Instead, they total your bill at the cash register without giving you an itemized copy. Now, that bothers some people, but with a bill of about $20 with tip for a family of four, how can you go wrong? And anyway, with the Eater's big expense account from News 8, who cares? For News 8, this is the unknown Eater, Tony Zakal in Eden Gardens. Rubio's in Mission Bay specializes in fish tacos and seems pretty proud of the fact they're listed prominently on a sign towering over the eatery. Now, genuine San Felipe-style fish tacos are spicy, crispy, and melt in your mouth. With all that going for them, it's no surprise fish tacos are becoming a pretty popular item this side of the border. When we first opened, there were only a couple other restaurants serving fish tacos. Now, there's we've counted at least uh, 30 of them. Rubio's is set up like a fast food restaurant. Step up to the window and give your order. Wait a few minutes and the food is ready. There's an outside eating area here where you can dine in splendor while watching the traffic on Mission Bay Drive. They have a long list of conventional Mexican food here, so along with my fish taco, I tried a carnitas burrito and a beef taco. All the food was good. The carnitas burrito with its shredded pork, beans, and sauce was especially so. As for the fish taco, it's made with batter fried fish, cabbage, and something labeled a special white sauce. We use mayonnaise and we put a little yogurt in it, plain yogurt, and that gives it a, a tangy flavor, but not everybody's supposed to know that. Now that we know the secret ingredients in fish tacos, how about the taste? They're so good. I mean, look at this beautiful taco. I can't believe how big they are, how great they taste, and I'm addicted. It was the greatest thing since sliced bread. I agree. The best I've found in town so far, and at 99 cents, the best bargain. The view may not be much at Rubio's, but the fish tacos here are definitely worth a try. With any good restaurant like Casa de Pico, you have to wait. I spent 25 minutes in line last Sunday, and that was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. After the wait, welcome relief in liquid form. If you like margaritas like I do, you'll love the ones at Casa de Pico. Now that grande may be a little bit large for your thirst, but there are smaller versions and they're just as good. And they're good, they're great. Also great, the chips. Casa de Pico used to serve the old Mexican style chips. When I visited a while back, I thought they tasted sort of stale. But now they've changed to American style chips. Those are the kind that you'll find in a Dorito bag. I'm sorry, they may not be authentic chips, but I like the new ones a lot better. The birds seem to like them as well. 
As for the salsa, it gets mixed reviews. I like hot sauce. Pico sauce is more spicy than it is hot. For me, the best part about eating Mexican food is eating too much hot sauce and then downing a cold margarita. The service was very friendly, and the food, here we go. The food is fantastic, all at a moderate price. I ordered a taco, tostada, enchilada with some beans and rice, a nice combination. But like the salsa, a little bit on the mild side. Then again, if you've been looking for a milder Mexican restaurant, Casa de Pico may be your place. This kid sure enjoyed it. Oh, come on now, smile. <laughs> there you go. And there's tableside music, too. You can only guess what they're singing about. Nice touch to round out a filling meal. So filling, you'll be interested in some scientific research performed just for this report. Now look at the scale. This is what I weighed before going to Casa de Pico, right at 160 pounds. And then afterwards, five pounds heavier. No lie. Now I have to tell you, that was the only meal I ate that day. I'm also happy to report that I've lost those five extra pounds, and I'll be going back to Casa de Pico for more. I hope to see you there as well. For News 8, this is the Unknown Eater. I mentioned outside dining and a lot of us seem to think of the coast, but do I have news for you? One of the most scenic places and best bargains is away from the beach, just a few miles inland. With all this beauty, could you imagine being inside or would you choose outside? Oh, outside, definitely, at Old Town's Casa de Pico, a land of flags, fountains, and flowers. If you like Spanish courtyards, you'll love Pico's house. Beautifully landscaped, it's enough to make you feel in a far better place. If there's a Garden of Eden in the uh, New World, this must be it. Is this heaven? <laughs> no, it's Iowa! <laughs> uh, that does bring up a point. The Bazaar del Mundo is a place that's thick with tourists. I'm from Detroit. Huntington Beach. Miami. And you know how tourists can get. I don't care for the sunshine. <laughs> it's warmer in Iowa right now than it is here. A uh, Typical complaints, but this is not your typical rip-off tourist hangout. Because it's one of the best places to eat Mexican food and drink margaritas. And this is one of Pico's finest, the Especial de Juan. Excellent carne asada and guacamole on this plate. But if you've sworn off red meat, there's the chicken fajita. For $7, it's a tortilla filled with excellent seasoned chicken. Now, I have to admit, I've had some bad experiences at some of the restaurants in the bazaar, but Pico Pico's record for good food served fast is almost unblemished. And the speed of the service is not by accident. We have uh, a system called the uh, runners that uh, they bring out the food. The waiters do take the order, but the runners bring out the food. Runners who careen around tables at breakneck speed with delivering a hot meal quickly to your table, their single-minded objective. Just one of the bright spots at the courtyard of the Casa de Pico. The ambience, the friendliness, the warmth, the open air, the flowers, the fauna, it's just beautiful. And a place where all the pieces for outside dining seem to fall together. You'll find it near the Bay Bridge in Chicano Park. Just drive a few blocks north on Logan Avenue and you've arrived at Las Cuatro Milpas. The first thing I noticed was a line of people waiting to get their food. A regular mixed bag of locals, Navy types, and downtown professionals. What they're waiting for has been described as... Some of the best Mexican food in town. The chorizo is a specialty of the house. It's served with beans and rice. Put it on a tortilla or eat it straight. I think you'll agree it's got a great flavor that doesn't overpower you. Unless, that is, you overdo the hot sauce. The chili's too hot. No, no, get out of here. No, 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 no. The hot sauce got the respect of most people I talk to. But you know, there's always some wise guy with an iron mouth. You, you, don't, you don't come in here, you don't eat the hot sauce, you'd embarrass the restaurant. We also tried the beef taco. The slow steam shredded beef really made it special. And we had what is possibly the largest chicken burrito in the Northern Hemisphere, again with an excellent mild flavor. Can't believe you can get this kind of a meal for this price. I agree, with two main dishes and a soft drink, my bill was less than $3. While you're downing that taco or burrito, you might notice an elderly gentleman walking around making sure all is running smoothly here. He's Natividad Estudio, and he'll be 90 this year. And he still checks to make sure that the recipes follow the ones he brought from Mexico over 60 years ago. Natividad makes sure the tortillas are handmade, not just on the premises, but right in the dining room. The sight of people rolling and cooking really adds to the atmosphere, but I found out there's an ulterior motive for it. You see it, you, your appetite, it raises up your appetite. That gives a bad taste. So that's why I picked out. Well, who would have guessed that subliminal suggestions were at work at my secret restaurant in the Barrio Logan. For News 8, I'm the Unknown Eater. We've shown you a few restaurants that have managed to do more than just stick around. They become part of what makes San Diego what it is. But it's a tough business, and many more restaurants have come and gone than have stayed around. Here are a few that were popular in their time, but that time 
has passed. Of course, there's no such thing as a free lunch, or dinner for that matter, but these prices come pretty darn close. We all know that the cost of eating out is clipping along at a steady upward pace, so this week the unknown eater tried out an inflation stopper where a family of three can eat out for about $15, and two of you can get by for under double figures. It's the College Restaurant in East San Diego, sitting at the busy intersection of Montezuma and El Cajon Boulevard east of College Avenue. Been there for 27 years. Same owner the whole time. Same low prices, too, creeping up over the years, but still low. And the same specialty, fried chicken dinner. As Lovable Lightner would say, you can really chow down. They give you four giant pieces of delicious chicken, tender and perfect with potatoes, corn pone, corn fritters, choice of salad or soup, and a basket of hot rolls. And you get the same large portions, with or without News 8 cameras watching. The college restaurant also has great desserts, and on Mondays, fantastic chicken dumpling soup. All in all, great food and prices. One other thing, if you know of other places like the college restaurant in San Diego with dinner for under five bucks, drop me a line. Send your inflation-beating dinner suggestions to the Unknown Eater, Box 80888, San Diego 92138. If you don't help me out with trimming my budget, Station management may cut me off. And then who would you turn to? I've been to the Village Townhouse restaurant twice now, once on my own a Friday night and once with our News 8 cameras on a Tuesday. And both times the waiting line stretched outside the door and into the parking lot. And I wanted to know why. It's the nearest thing to eating at home at a reasonable price. All the waitresses are so wonderful, they could be your sisters. So I think it's the most reasonable restaurant in town. It's consistently good food at a reasonable price, and that's something that's pretty hard to find these days. We've been coming for about eight years. We've tried almost everything on their menu, and it's always been good. I think uh, it's really it's a, an experience. You have to go in and try it yourself. The unknown eater tried out the roast beef dinner. Now for $2.30, what you expect is exactly what you get. Not the greatest meal ever, mediocre, home-style cooking, nothing fancy, but very filling, and the prices are super low. All the dinners include salad or soup plus a dessert, and not one dinner at the Village Townhouse is priced over $3. With money as tight as it is these days, a warm meal at those prices is hard to beat. So keep those inflation-stopping ideas coming. Having dinner at the bungalow is like visiting a friend's house in the country. An outstanding environment, reasonable prices, an amazing wine list, and perhaps the best roast duck in town. All of that earns this restaurant a spot among my five favorites. Now, the bungalow is a converted beachside cottage for two decades, a sit-down hamburger joint. But in the past seven years, the menu has changed dramatically for the better, including filet of chicken stuffed with ham and asparagus, red snapper prepared a variety of ways, and sensational roast duck in either orange or cherry sauce. Now, the unknown eater's favorite at the bungalow is filet of beef Kempinski, it's an old German recipe, slices of choice tenderloin beef served over a pastry spread with mushrooms and shallots and then drenched with a delicious Bordelaise topping. The service is excellent. The atmosphere at the bungalow, warm and homey. And last but not least, an incredible wine list, nearly 500 choices, ranging from simple California red wines for about six bucks to a 1945 bottle of Chateau Lafitte Rothschild, $650. From Ocean Beach, this is The Unknown Eater. I've often thought that one of the most pleasant surprises for any San Diego visitor awaited those people lucky enough to stay in this rather nondescript travel lodge and hotel circle, simply because when they go to the motel coffee shop in the morning for another typical breakfast, they end up instead at Adam's Steak and Eggs, and the breakfast is anything but typical. They serve huevos rancheros at Adam's, and corn fritters, and biscuits, sausages, and gravy, and hot buttered tortillas with your eggs instead of toast if you want them, and even side orders of real hominy grits. Yeah, grits. But as you might have guessed from the name, the specialty of the house is steak and eggs, and it's excellent. For $3.95, you don't get some hamburger steak or some tiny piece of tough meat. Now you get a nice-sized hunk of sirloin, little or no fat, and broiled just right. 
And of course, you get the eggs, some tasty hash browns and toast, or tortillas. If you get the toast, try a little honey butter on it. The coffee's hot and the service is almost overly friendly. But, you knew there had to be a but, but Adams is really popular, and not just with the people who wander into the travel lodge. Locals know all about the good food here, and there aren't a whole lot of tables. So plan on waiting for a while during the week, and for quite a while on the weekend. But plan on going anyway. You won't be sorry. Tomorrow, a tip on a great out-of-the-way place to have an unusual dinner for two. In the meantime, this is the Unknown Eater at Adams Steak and Eggs in Hotel Circle. After all that, I'm hungry. Good thing we have so many options here in San Diego. Thanks for watching this throwback special. To see more throwbacks like this one on CBS 8 Plus, click on the News tab at the top of the screen. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. We'll see you next time.